Episode 2 of The Code of Honour. Welcome back. My name is Ben Chapman and welcome to Episode 2, where today we have got, well, our first big event. Ring of Honour, Supercard of Honour, 14. If we have a look, you can see the coverage we have got. We have got Fight TV and The Honour Club, both showing this event for you tonight. Small in America, very small in Canada, tiny in Mexico, Britain, Japan, Europe and Australia. And with no viewership in India, which is a little disappointing, you know. A few people are absent from tonight's show. We've got Bateman, Brody King, Chris Dickinson and Leo Rush and PJ Black all working for New Japan of America. Doing their shows for tonight on a... Uh, Lions Cup, whatever it's called, the Union Japan America show. We also have Sinte Diolo, who's working for AAA, and La Bestia Zaling. Maria Canales Bennett is, of course, on maternity leave. Leolas is working for AAA, and Dragon Lee is currently out, injured. So tonight, we're intending for a sellout. Because we're in New York City, we're in the Manhattan Center. One of probably the most famous wrestling venues, of course, the original home of Monday Night Raw. But tonight, it's the home of Ring of Honor, the Supercard of Honor. Big show tonight, and let me know what you guys think. Let's snap into it then. And we kick off our show with, of course, the guy who returned big last night, Samoa Joe. He comes out opening the show. And he cuts a promo about how, no, he's been trapped away for years now. And now he is back in Ring of Honor, the place which started it all. And he is going to be here. And he is going to get Ring of Honor back under the chokehold it used to be in. His chokehold. And we get Dan Housen coming out. I like Dan Housen, but I could never write for him. So we are just going to, I'm just putting that Danhausen comes out and does some of his comedy stick with Samoa Joe, who is completely not into it, completely stoic in the face of Danhausen, before Samoa Joe takes him out of the clothesline and locks in the coquina clutch. Because of course Samoa Joe would have been cheered on his rival, we don't want him to be cheered. He is coming in as a heel. 66 rating, or at least ambiguous at best. 66 rating though for the opening segment. Our first match. So he's Bandido y Flamita, Mex of Bloods, taking on Rep Titus and Tracy Williams of the Foundation. And the Mex of Bloods pick up the win when Bandido pins Rep Titus with Revolution Fly. Mex of Bloods win the World Tag Team Championships, goes about 20 minutes. Good stuff from all four guys. Bandido getting a 70 is very promising. I do hope that no big companies come in and steal them. Because at this point, if a big company comes in and goes, oh yeah, we'd like to offer you an exclusive written contract, there's not much I can do. I just have to go, oh, okay, bye then. So we kind of do have to grow the company up to the point where we can go, no thank you, we want to keep them. 52 is great stuff. Todd Sinclair, we weren't able to replace him for a free. It's only one day after the, we found out that he was terrible. Yay. Then get the iconic trio, Casey, Casey Cassidy, Jesse McKay, and Tennille Dashwood, chatting about the 10 women battle royale to crown the first Ring of Honor World Women's Championship. Because, of course, the Women of Honor Chai title is not in the same lineage as this. 52 rating. And it was absolutely one of those three. K.C. Cassidy, of course, the former Peyton Royce, wins the Ring of Honor Women's World Championship. Jessie McKay eliminating herself for Casey, K.C. Cassidy. Tadil Dashwood also in the final four. This is the entire depth of the women's division. I do want to improve it a lot. And we are going to work on improving it to make it comp competent with the knockouts division, 
NXT Women's Division, AEW Women's Division, and of course, WWE Main Roster Women's Division. 45 rating though is not too shabby. Next up, six man tag team titles on the line. As the Shane Taylor promotions of Shane Taylor, Korn, and Moses took on the Shinobi Shadow Squad of Eli Ilsom, Ryan Nova, and the world famous CB. And they pick up the win when Moses pins Eli Il Ilsom, Isom, or whatever, however you pronounce his name. If you look at the ratings, Shane Taylor and, well, World Strongest CB were top of the list, of course, former cheeseburger, if I remember correctly. 38 rating though is good stuff. It's obviously a mid card transitional match. I'm happy though to see that. The pure championship on the line next. As I put I literally just put out our top two technical wrestlers in this company. To go out there and just fight each other. Because that's what I wanted to see them try. I wanted to see these two just go out there and have a technical wrestling masterclass for 21 minutes. And they do. Jonathan Gresham defeats Alex Shelley in 21-37 to retain his pure championship for the fourth time. Gresham is the only person in this company to have a technical rating higher of 8 than 80. I think Shelley got a 76 in technical. So I'm very happy with these two. 54 is a little disappointing. I'm looking at the dirt sheet. What the hell happened? The announce team and the referee and we that so basically what I'm learning is the actual in-ring stuff we've got is good. But the stuff surrounding the in-ring is weak and we need to improve it. 54 rating is not good enough for these guys. For those ratings. The amount of so the amount of stuff bringing it down is massive, so I'm very disappointed. And our main event flopped massively. They Ah dear that's disaster this is a disaster. This is a disaster. We're gonna have to Okay, this is a new company. We're gonna have to learn things very quickly, I've le we're working out here. Samoa Joe defeats Roosh in 28.03 when Roosh gets, was disqualified after La Sombra ran in to attack Samoa Joe. Fans hated the DQ finish. And afterwards we get a little bit of restores as La Sombra joins the faction Iglanabas. 67 rating. Oh, please tell me that doesn't completely kill the show. It's a 43 rating, but I did some more Joe versus Roosh. Huh? That's uh, not right. We lost Pop in 11 regions. We gained it in 42, though. So, I think that still has to count as a failure, though. Because those are the regions we don't have any popularity in, pretty much. So, to lose in America is a very big disappointment. We're going to have to work further to get this proper. We're going to do a quick speech. I'm going to give La Sombra... Casey Cassidy and Jonathan Gresham as good examples. All three are pleased. Let's move on to see what else happened in the wrestling world that day. So, in the rest of the wrestling world, let's we should probably have a look at what New Japan Strong were doing. But first, let's see pay per view buys. Supercard of Honor, we get. 31,743. No buys. But the Honor Club did pay for us, but we got no pay-per-view buys. That is... Oh, that is disastrous. This is actually... Disastrous. We need to work on that. So, what did New Japan, though, do? New Japan Strong. That's what it was called. Strong. So, we've got Brody King, John Moxley, and Kenta versus Fred Rosser, Clark, Kenners, and, DC, and D, DKC. 
Not bad. Not a bad main event for that first one. Taping first next week's show is Kenta and John Moxley versus TJP and ACH. Why are they doing Kenta and John Moxley in a team? Makes no sense. John Moxley versus Kenta, Fred Rosser, and Brody King in a cage match. Oh. Clark Connors versus ACH and John Moxley versus Fred Rosser, Leo Rush, and Brody King. So that's why Leo Rush needed to be there. Fair enough. And we got two more signings Levy Cooper. And Mickey James, someone who is really going to have help in our women's division. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.